On this week's episode of Hear These Words, we get God answering Job out of the whirlwind 38 chapters after his suffering. And then we move over to Hebrews where we hear about Jesus offering up prayers with loud cries and tears, much like us sometimes. And finally, we get James and John competing over who can sit at Jesus' right and left hands. Join us for this episode of Hear These Words. Welcome to Hear These Words, a podcast and video series from Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in beautiful Tequesta, Florida. I'm Sanford Groff, the rector here, and I'm joined today by Alex Sarah Wolfington, our new field ed seminarian, a postulant from the Diocese of Maine in formation to become a priest. Hi, Alex. Hi, thanks for having me. How are you today? I'm really good. It's How great. Are you? I'm great. It's good. great to have you on the show. Uh, thanks for saying yes uh, on literally your first day. Literally. Literally your first yes. day. So <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> and, and, and your first year in seminary as my well. My first year, You're, my first few months, that's my right. first semester. Your first, so lots of firsts. Lots of firsts. Well, thank you for jumping in front of a, a camera and a no mic problem. and uh, running through this. Our, every week on the podcast, we get ready for Sunday by taking a look at the lessons that are assigned for each upcoming week. And this week is the second, uh, the twenty-second Sunday after the Pentecost, and it's proper twenty-four B as in boy. And the words we hear are Job chapter thirty-eight verses one through seven. We're taking a look at parts of Psalm one hundred and four, Hebrews chapter five verses one through ten, and the Gospel of Mark chapter ten verses thirty-five through forty-five. But before we get into that, just tell us, uh, you know, welcome, welcome to Good Shepherd. Thank you. And um, welcome to uh, Life of Seminary, which I, Thank you. we were just reminiscing a little bit about, about that. Yes. How, how have you found your first couple of classes and just, you know, time in, in, in seminary? You Tell us where you go to seminary to. So I go to General Theological Seminary, which is based in New York City. And it's right in Chelsea. There's an affiliation with Virginia Theological Seminary, which mm -hmm. is where... Where I went and did my doctorate. Went and yep. did your doctorate. Yep. Uh, and the program I'm in is a hybrid program. So I spend a few weeks a year in New York City mm -hmm. on the close, the campus in New York, and about a week and a half a year in Virginia. And otherwise, it's all online. It's modern learning, which is modern. terrific because I wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. Right, because you actually have a job. I, I have a company. <laughs> you have a co you actually have a, a, company a company that is also your job, right? Yes. It's, yes. It's, um, so you so you're basically having to um, work, work and go to school, and then go to school, mm -hmm. and then do your homework for mm -hmm. your classes, yes. and then. Uh, write your papers and yes. take your tests and all the rest all of it. All the things. So yeah. you're you're going to be uh, pretty busy. I am. I'm pretty busy. But... but it's great to have you at Good Shepherd because we get to enjoy um, having you. Basically, it's a Sunday only feel that experience for the time being, and uh, we're you know we're we keep it limited to a certain number of hours per week. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be doing everything, uh, but we will get you exposed to as many things as we can in the time we have allotted. That's great. And um, and it'll be a great kind of, um, I think it'll be a great kind of collaborative and learning experience. Yeah. And you're joining as well our other field ed um, student, Adalia Adams, who's yes. a, a postulant out of our own diocese being formed for the diaconate. So you're going, you've discerned a call to the priesthood. Correct. And you're not from this diocese. Correct. You're you're from the Diocese of Maine. That's right. And so you are down, why are you down here now? Well, my father lives here, um, but my husband and, is a and I- here And too. is a parishioner here. Yes. Um, and my husband and I have a house in Jupiter. And mm -hmm. so it made sense to winter down here and yep. work remotely and go to school remotely and get um, all the uh, wisdom from Father Groff that I can. Oh, I don't know if there's much wisdom. <laughs> and, and I don't know. Meet a new community. Yeah. Um, and I'm just really grateful to Bishop Eaton and Bishop Brown from Maine, yes. who were wonderful and collaborative and allowing me to do my field placement here. So thank you to everybody. And in fact, she'll be meeting Bishop Eaton. I don't know if it's for the I, first I time, met him yet. but on Sunday yeah. because it's his annual visitation. So he'll be here and you'll be. 
up close and personal That's great. Uh, for your first Sunday. So we're really excited to have you, Alex, and we're really uh, thrilled that you chose to be with us. And I think it'll be a, a wonderful, just a wonderful time. Yeah. We'll get to kind of learn and grow together. I'm really, really yeah. looking forward to it. So thanks to everybody and can't wait to meet you all. Great. Yeah. Now, have you taken any uh, Bible classes yet? We're right in the middle of Old Testament, right? You started no. Old Testament. So Excellent. It's perfect. Timing. Perfect. And, and 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 just from a from a seminary class perspective, mm -hmm. what are you? Where are you in the Old Testament in terms of the class? We are, you... are in Hosea right now. Okay. So we're doing don't... a little bit of vassal treaty treaty okay. work. You okay. know, we're we're discussing all the ways that the Assyrian. Uh -huh. uh, Empire okay. and the vassal treaties that existed there are now translating to Yahweh. Got so it. we are. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not going to cover no, that we today. To go, we don't have to go into all that <laughs> ever. <laughs> We're not going to cover that today. We are, however, going to take a quick look at Job, right? Yes. And have you, I don't, I don't, you probably haven't, haven't studied touched Job. It. We haven't touched on it yet. Yeah. And um, Job, of course, from a, um, um, uh, from a genre perspective, is is quite different um, mm -hmm. than than a lot of the other books in the Old Testament. And today we we are chapter thirty eight, and mm -hmm. we are, you know, we were at chapter one two weeks ago. It's mm -hmm. a four week kind of thing in the lectionary. Uh, three weeks ago or two weeks ago, we started with God and the Satan kind of having this debate about whether Job would kind of turn his back on God, even if he lost everything, and he lost everything, he didn't mm -hmm. turn his back on God. Last week, we have Job kind of anguishing, and now we're all the way, he's been anguishing for 38 chapters, and now we get, the then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. We get kind of God's answer. So we're all, we're all with bated breath, wondering what God is going to say. I'm ready. How did you read it? Well, I have to admit, as a good seminarian, I brought my ginormous, yes. uh, you know, Your study Bible, study Bible, yes. and I did read it beforehand. Yes. I, I think some of the translations that they give in the study Bible are helpful to understanding yeah. it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, where it says um, whirlwind instead of whirlwind, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. They proposed the translation as storm, right? Which is yeah. helpful. Um, and then. Who is it that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Um, really what they're talking about is the set of divine principles mm -hmm. in, within the plan, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, according to which creation should be run, right. which are all the divine principles. So that's helpful in understanding that. Mm -hmm. And gird up your loins like a man actually means warrior in combat. So mm -hmm. gird yourself up like a warrior in combat. Mm -hmm. um, so just that first piece, I think, right. is really... Yeah. Much more has much more context than right. I would have known just reading it without the right. help of the study Bible. Right, and I and I and I, I love the idea of of taking a look at whirlwind and, and imagining storm because mm. storm. I mean, having just you, gone through the hurricanes, having just gone through our hurricanes uh, in a in a nature and physical sense, storm also has this ability to kind of be a time in your life or mm. a circumstance in life where. There's chaos, mm. right? And, um, and 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 the Lord answers Job out of that chaos, mm. out of that context of being turned upside down and inside out. God, is, God's going to actually speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that for me, um, um, if I if I was maybe not a priest or if I was just coming at this cold, I would say. Good. I hope God is going to just fix it, right? God's going to come out of the storm and make it all better, right? That's my expectation. My expectation is that when God speaks, everything gets fixed mm -hmm. and everything gets put back in its proper place. Mm -hmm. It's almost like creation part two, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. um, and yet, and yet, that's not really what we're going to get here with with God and Job, and that's not really what we get, frankly, in many other parts of Scripture. When God when God shows up, when God speaks, it's oftentimes not to strong arm or, 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 or put things back in their exact order. Uh, it's often kind of a little bit more difficult than that. God's always there for us when things happen. He doesn't yes. make the things happen. Right. And so right. this is the reminder for me that, of that. Right. right? That, yep. And we'll, we'll see more of that in this as well. Well, and, 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 and so then, you know, so, so as you said, you know, kind of get stand, you know, gird up your loins, mm -hmm. kind of stand ready. Mm 
Um, and, I, and, then, and then I will question you. <laughs> and Job's kind of like... Thanks a lot. Really? <laughs> like, why? 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 Why are you questioning me? But he, he's, he's quiet. The, the author doesn't, doesn't say that Job interrupted God. Mm -hmm. And the first question is, were, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? I mean, what, what kind of question is that? I mean, clearly, when God laid the foundation of the earth, Job didn't exist. Right. Right? right. And so it's really saying, do you really think right. that you can equate to me right. in any right. way, shape, or form? Right. I mean, you are here because I conceived of you. Right. And I think in this, and I think we, in our um, very wonderful uh, 21st century Episcopal way, mm -hmm. we, we really want the God who, when God is answering us out of the storm, we really just want um, comfort, mm. right? I think comfort in our day and age is probably a pinnacle value uh, a, mm. in, 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 in these types of times where, sure. you know, I go into a hospital room, my job is to bring, or you, you know, we bring right. comfort, right? right. Where our first job is to be, at least do no harm, maybe. <laughs> but, but here God, I mean, you know, but here God is really going to go a little bit on probably more of the offensive mm. than I would feel comfortable with mm. if, if I were, not that I'm God, but, you know, if I was answering someone who, was coming to me with a 38 chapter, 37 chapter lament mm -hmm. over the plight of their life, I would want to bring some comfort. But God kind of digs right in. You know, where can you, you know, where where were you? And 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 um he 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 doesn't back down. He just kind of goes and goes and uh, we won't we won't um we won't get to it because we're gonna actually omit verses 34 through 41 mm -hmm. for the sake of time. But 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 can you do all the things that I've done? You know, right. can you, you know, make the floods fl floods of waters cover you? Can bring mm -hmm. you send forth lightning? Um, have you put wisdom in the inmost part? So God keeps going, kind of in this way that, first of all, is surprising to me, and second of all, from an from a from a dialogue or, or way that we form our arguments in the in this day and age would seem a little bit. Again, the word I keep using is aggressive. Mm. I don't know. What are your well, thoughts? Well, I mean, God does that a lot in the Old Testament, right? I mean, that's kind of the God of the Old Testament. That's a little bit. Right? And it's so, a little bit what you get. We, we don't get the fuzzies until right. Jesus comes along, right? Right. 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 Or you got to you gotta work for you some gotta fuzzies. Work for you got to work for some fuzzies in so the Old it's Testament. So it's yeah. pretty, you know, yeah. characteristic. But I, I think, too, it was a time in which God was talking to a people that had you know, honored polythe polytheism at, right. up until that point. And there was right. Baal and all these different, you know, temples to all these different gods and goddesses. And so God had to come in and really say, yeah. I am Yahweh and truly yeah. I am the one. Right. And so it was probably an audience that needed this really direct reinforced message. Right. Right. Um, and we're reading it today and, you know, yeah, we have, our like own context. Are, we have our own context. We're like, right. we know God's God, but right. it was not, that was not the audience at the right. time. So, well, and I think there's, I think there's a deeper um, truth here. And that is that we we're reading this. And I think Job at mm -hmm. some level is expecting that there is an answer mm -hmm. that is going to satisfy, mm -hmm. right? There's a, there's a Snickers out there that's Great really going to satisfy. Great point. And we want that too. In the storms of our life, when things are not going the right way, we, oftentimes we will say, why? And I've had many people tell me after, you know, tragedy and all sorts of yeah. things, why, why, why? And again, my, my theological answer, which is not my compassionate answer, but my theological answer is, sure. what will that, if you actually got the why, how will that move the needle for you emotionally? How will, will that actually satisfy you? Will right. you actually, oh, that makes perfect, that make, me understanding the why yeah. makes perfect sense and somehow allows me to accept or embrace what has actually happened. I don't, that's at least to my reading of things, that's not how we're built. That's not how things work. The faith is the thing. The faith is the thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's not about the answer. It's right. not about the why. Right. Um, or, or 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 fully understanding or grasping why. Mm -hmm. There's something deeper going on here, and I think that's what, at, at a higher level, I think that's what kind of is 
being gotten at here by this this kind of non-answer I think that's beautiful answer yeah so absolutely agree he's already graduated so. well there we go we're all <laughs> learning for lifelong learning okay I think that's good are great. we okay with that great let's move to a book I know very little about Hebrews hmm. <laughs> Hebrews 5 um 1 through 10 <clears throat> We, we're, we're, we're going, we're kind of continuing on here through how Jesus is our high priest. Um, one who uh, kind of though divine learned, uh, you know, kind of uh, of his of his divinity through obedience, right? Mm -hmm. Or through learned obedience through suffering, I should say. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus identified with our own human weakness and his role as mod, as mediator between God and humanity. Mm -hmm. Um and and here we see this uh, both in terms of, you know, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by one. You are my son today. I have begotten you, right? In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears. Um, and, uh, and although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. So... So we get this, again, a high, what we would call a high Christology, mm -hmm. which basically is the idea that, that Jesus' identity as fully human and fully, fully mm -hmm. God um, is efficacious because of how he engaged with those identities. Mm -hmm. And the, the key becomes how do we uh -huh. in our lives... Yes follow that intense faith of Christ right while he was alive right to know that no matter what mm -hmm. our actions and our own sacrifice mm -hmm. can follow that model right because we don't see necessarily ourselves in the model of Jesus's life mm -hmm. but if we saw our story, someone else's story, become very clear, right. I think, most right. of the time. Right. So when we offer our prayers up, uh, certainly with cries and tears sometimes, mm -hmm. I think um, we don't realize that that's a human experience that Jesus right. had. Right. And that he was here for us and lived that also. Right. And he wouldn't have been truly human. Yes. If he hadn't. If he hadn't. Mm -hmm. And there's, and I think, it, I think your point is really well taken, that in our own human experience, even mm -hmm. the hard ones, we are in solidarity with Jesus. Absolutely. That Jesus, is, or put it differently, Jesus is in solidarity with us. Absolutely. And that there's great, I think, I think both in terms of modeling, kind of as you mentioned, like how how we can follow, um, but I also think in terms of going back to my obsession with comfort today well i was gonna say like, you know isn't that comforting it's comforting right it's, it's so comforting that to there's me. right that spiritually there's this connection right yes. there's this that 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 there's nothing in the human experience that jesus didn't or, or was shielded from mm. right? maybe is a better way to put mm -hmm. it and that um and that he offered up prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears mm. it's it's kind of it's also surprising. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, it's interesting to point out his reverent submission. Yes. Like, the reverence that he, like, mm -hmm. we were reverent to to, to him, right, right? Right, But even Jesus was reverent right. to God and had great right. reverence to his father, our father. Right. And so, again, a human experience that yeah. is so comforting to know that right. Jesus understands us when we are in the process of worship and how yeah. important worship is and how mm -hmm. important prayer is mm -hmm. to get us through those times as it got him through his times. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's good stuff. Keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving. Do we, we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. Mark 10. Um, now the bishop is coming. So that yes. means at 10 o'clock he'll be here and he'll preach. So yes. I'm off. You'll learn about this that, you know, I'm off. You get a day off. No, no, because he's well, not here. At eight, he's not here at eight o'clock. Oh, so you're uh, if you're coming to eight o'clock, if you're an uh, eight o'clocker, you will hear whatever I have to say, which is probably around Mark because okay. I've been I've been in the Gospels and we're yes, just going to keep yes. going. And here we get this story of you know two of Jesus's disciples, mm -hmm. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, right? So they're mm -hmm. brothers, 
and they're they, they want to know you know and they kind of Jesus gets put in these situations all the time but they say teacher we want you to do whatever we ask of you I mean it's very blunt right we want do, don't we do that today still we though do. don't we, we say come on we do we let do let this lottery ticket be the one correct. Jesus correct throw me a bone correct we were actually just talking about that okay good in Bible study <laughs> oh <clears throat> um Jesus says, what do you want me to do? You know, and then they basically say, we want, we want to be at your, at, at your right hand and your left. We want to be number one and number two, okay? And, and Jesus basically says, listen, you don't even know what you're asking. Yeah. You, you've got no clue. Yeah. You're, you're thinking about power. You're thinking about prestige. You're thinking about access mm -hmm. in a way that is very human, right? Earthly power. Very earthly and that you think you're going to have some sort of benefit mm -hmm. by doing that. And yet what you're really asking, and, and as he says, you know, are you, going to, are you going to drink the cup that I drink? And they very quickly, I can just see it in my mind's eye. Oh, we are, we're able. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, the cup I drink, you will drink. I mean, like, but, but again, they don't really get what's happening. It's a little happening. foreshadowing, right? It's a little foreshadowing. Um, well, so what do you, I mean, how do you? Do I love, I did lots of highlighting on this. I loved this because um, there's a discussion um, in, again, the, the study Bible, but about the provisional um, nature of earthly power mm, and mm. how earthly power requires that other humans are subjugated. Right. And that is mm -hmm. so different than what Jesus's knowledge of power is, which is power in, in his terms right. means servant leadership right yeah. and and serving i mean the last thing he did on earth was wash feet the mm -hmm. day before he mm -hmm. died right mm -hmm. i mean that's right that's true embodiment raising others oh, up that's right right yeah right so that that's a a beautiful message of this i think yeah yeah and a good i think it's a good reminder when we get and again i, I i'm i'm um when when it comes to how we experience our life as mm -hmm. secular people, mm -hmm. right? So, so not our, not necessarily our Christian. Uh, when when we're thinking about things with a Christian worldview, but rather when we're in our more secular modes of thinking, um, I like to think of it not in terms of active thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I give I give I give myself a little bit of a break, mm -hmm. and I like to think about it in terms of inherited thinking. Mm -hmm. So I've inherited a way of thinking where subjugation of others is how we exercise power, right? I mean, now you can kind of find yourself on uh, a different degrees of that uh, level sure. of inherited and then what you you know, some people yeah. inherit some part of it and then they m capitalize on that and manifold that 18 times over and they mm -hmm. really end up becoming power players in the world. Yeah. Um, but that comes at a cost. And I think that I think that what Jesus is arguing here is that is that the, you know the the, the the privilege or the prestige that you want from this does come at a cost. And that cost is something that I'm gonna bear myself. Mm. And that in bearing that myself, in order to try to alt offer an alternative, I'm gonna you're my disciples, I'm inviting you to, to bear that with me. And are you ready to do that? And of course, they don't, you know, they don't really get that. Sure. I'm not sure I really get that. Um, but then it's interesting because it says when the 10 heard this, they became angry with James and John. And, um, you know, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them as great tyrants. Uh, so it is, uh, but, but it is not so among you. Whoever, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And now this is the servant leadership mm -hmm. part, right? Whoever wishes to be first must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to, to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the whole thing about power, right? The human right. conception of power is being served. Right. Where the work, Jesus's conception of power is to serve in the to name serve. of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's... I, I like I like James and John because I just think they I think they kind of say the quiet part out loud, <laughs> right? And they team up. They're like, we have an idea. Uh, I know you can. Those just, jobs are available. Right, Let's right. just go tell them we want them. Right. And Jesus exactly. is like, I don't. I don't think. I don't understand. think you understand what's going. 
But I love This you. is a whole different way of thinking <laughs> and being and doing. Yeah. Um, and yet, and yet I think, I mean, I, you know, I can certainly, um, I can certainly uh, empathize with that. I will say, just because you're here. Yes. You know, I think if I was by myself or with anyone else, I probably wouldn't. I don't think I would dawn on me. But now that I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking back to one of my field ed experiences mm. when I was a... This was for me after I was in seminary. Mm -hmm. I was a, a little bit of a wonky process person. Okay. But this was during my formation period after seminary, but I was being formed to be a priest. So okay. I was working and then I had my field ed um, uh, experience on Sundays. And I remember my supervising uh, priest sitting down with me at one of our sessions and saying... You know, one of the things that I really would encourage you to consider is don't rise too fast. Mm. Don't rise too fast. He said, and sometimes you're going to be the one that's going to, like James and John, you're going to be the one who's going to become the rector and do this and do that and, 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 and do all that. He said, in other times, the church is going to be in cahoots to try to get you to rise too fast. And what will happen is, you'll end up outpacing your own development, mm -hmm. right? You're like, you'll, you'll, you'll be in a position that you're not ready for, basically, mm -hmm. is what he was mm -hmm. saying. This was, gosh, I was probably like, I don't know, 28 or 29. Mm -hmm. And I've always, I've, that's really sunk into my mm -hmm. priesthood. Like, mm -hmm. And that's probably why I was an associate for nine and a half years mm -hmm. at St. Mark's, because mm -hmm. I was, I mean, A, I was in a really great spot with a great sure. rector and all that. Yeah. But, but I think Father Earl's words were really operative in, in the depths of my, my being. And I think, it's, I think it's kind of speaking to James and John. It's like, no, like be ready mm -hmm. for that next step. Be ready for what, what is to come. Because what is to come, you might see it with a particularly optimistic, rosy, powerful light. Mm -hmm. But what it's actually going to have is some difficulty mm -hmm. and you want to be ready for the difficult, you, you know, enjoy the good stuff, but be ready for the hard stuff. And also what we want is this much. Cause that's all we can see. Right. Right. And that's right. you know, God and Jesus have a plan for us. That's like this much, Yeah, which is so right. much better that we can even conceive of. That's right. So when we're trying to get the one tulip, we're yeah. really a bouquet is waiting for us. You that's know? right. We're right. We're so focused in God's on God's time. Yeah, we're focused on like yeah the human perception the of one, reality, right. <laughs> and that and that ties in with last week's you know yeah, lesson. You know right. that the hundredfold increase mm -hmm. after releasing mm -hmm. all of those different things that kind of hold us back, and how then then there's this hundredfold abundance that comes in. Yeah, uh, which is a really good message, uh, especially with stewardship season coming up. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> It's just going to be this way for a couple of weeks. It's I'm okay. going to, I'm going to, okay. I slept it, it is in. It is the season. It is the season. All right. Well, this was great. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I'm Absolutely. very grateful. And uh, thank you for joining us for this week's episode. Uh, if you liked it, you can give us a like. You can share it with your friends. It's always good to share. Subscribe to YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to never miss an episode. And now we hope that you feel prepared uh, this Sunday to hear these words. We'll see you soon.